What a great introduction to the video. Two laughing mad women. And now, a traditional farewell. Hi. <laughs> We're here. Philosophically astute, as you will always be here, wherever you are. After the flight, naturally we hit the road. Off to Launceston and our first stop in the itinerary. Which was going to take us all the way down the east coast of Tasmania to, to Southport. And what's the most important thing or item when travelling with Nana? Why the accommodation of course. Bates Motel unfortunately had no vacancies, though I'm sure there was going to be some fairly soon. Option two was this lovely little place that we stayed in. And this was our first accommodation for the tour. None too shabby, no termites. That's right, the climate means that Launceston is a termite-free region and the glorious wood buildings, especially from an earlier era, still stand soundly, solidly and majestically. They're free from the degradation and gnawing of termites that over a hundred year period have destroyed many hysteric, hysteric, historic <laughs> buildings over the ditch in Australia. You are feeling sleepy. You are feeling very sleepy. Close your eyes. When I click my fingers, you will give me all of your money. <laughs> oh well, it was worth a try. Within the gardens, there was a monkey enclosure and it contained a troop of Japanese macaques. The enclosure, as you can see, was quite elaborate and reasonably complex. And I have it on good authority from one of the godheads of bioanthropology that if the habitat they are living in is varied enough and interesting enough, the macaques are quite happy and content to stay within a small space even if they were out in the wild in the bush as we call it or the jungle as others would call it they'd be quite content just to roam around within quite a small space and not leave it
We were able to watch them playing and eating, primping and preening, and even engage in a more exotic behaviour. We witnessed an occurrence of monkey or primate navel gazing, where you take your partner, lie them down, and literally gaze into their navel. What is this glorious building? Is it the most baroquely sumptuous double you see in all of Australia? No, it's a plant conservatory. With a diverse collection of tropical and temperate climate exotics from across the globe. A really wondrous profusion of colours and textures housed in a very small space. And within this space, bromeliads, orchids, ferns, and a little golden boy peeing endlessly. Perhaps a statuary advertisement to a healthy prostate. After the gardens, which are both relaxing and very enjoyable, we had a choice of driving through the opulent ridged suburbs pretending to be period piece grand designs inspectors, or watch the locals engage in a traditional Tasmanian breeding ritual. Note that these breeding practices in Tasmania, though they might, might be quite innovative, are tangibly ineffectual. Behold the enigma of the random pointer. Is he indicating the water, the channel marker, or a prime real estate option in the distance? Now we could have motored to a museum and looked at endless heroic portraits of white males, the self-proclaimed pudgy, big, overfed conquerors of the region, surrounded by the decorative and separatingly dull familial entourage in picture after picture. But instead, we decided we would go on a cruise. And there she be, our tourist bark. Is it the vision impaired cruise line, where the only person who can see which way the boat is going is you? No, it's actually a trip toward the, toward the Cataract Dam via the Esk River, thus the name Cataract Tours. And the captain would not need a labradorial vision aid to bark out instructions as to whether to go left or right. Nana on the wharf, looking composed, alert, and standoverish. Either the hit or the fix is on. Well, at least if the deal goes down successfully, it should finance the rest of our tour of Tasmania. As we toured along, the gentleman gave us some facts and figures about Launceston. He mentioned when Launceston, through hydropower, got streetlights and I haven't looked it up but it appears that perhaps Launceston had street lighting at about the same time that New York got street lighting so you may want to go away and look that up and see whether I am in any way correct or way off the mark The cruise up through the gorge was both very relaxing and eye-catchingly fantastic. For myself to sleep at night
There is nothing more relaxing after a nautical adventure than to recline in a Launceston pub, which we did. Well, they even had a brew or two, which was only available in Tasmania, not back in Australia. And they're actually a very, very nice drop. And the next day, we got up, packed the car, and hit the road. Off on stage two of our adventure. We were heading to St. Helens.